right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan Dowdy, who is in Kansas City, Missouri. How are you doing, Ryan? I am great, John. How are you? Excellent. And Ryan is the CEO and co-founder of Social Sellers Academy. And she hosts a, a, a podcast, I think it's the Daily Sales on Demand for, for CEOs. And uh, what we're going to talk today is about mindset, sales mindset. So let's get straight into it, Ryan. Uh, for you, when you talk about, number one, when you talk about sales mindset, what do you mean? Because people throw that word around a lot. And I think sometimes people don't really have a good definition of what a, what a, a good mindset is. Yeah. So when I talk about sales mindset, John, for me, it's really about the, the way we show up as salespeople, right? What I mm -hmm. see so frequently in sales professionals is this idea that selling is something we do to someone or as salespeople, maybe our role isn't as important or we give away our power to the people with the money and the clients and the prospects have everything. And so we feel like we are you know, um, less than for lack of a better word, right? So for me, the sales mindset is really having the mindset that as a sales professional, we actually are the ones with the power. We're the ones that solve problems. And so rather than seeing sales as, again, something we do to someone being worried about being too salesy or too pushy or too, you know, being perceived as too money hungry or too focused on all those things. So for me, sales mindset is really this idea that as a sales professional, I am an important business person who does something important that helps people get a specific result that solves a specific problem. And really kind of having that idea of everybody should want to have a conversation with me, not gosh, I hope this person, or gosh, I hope that this goes well, but it's like, no, everyone should want to talk to me. Like we should be so bought in and so sold on what we sell that it's not, well, this person's doing me a favor by having a conversation, but like, I'm doing them a favor. Like I'm really helping them. So when I say sales mindset, John, it's really bringing that attitude of like, you know, almost uh, just blind excitement and enthusiasm around what we do to our sales conversations, to how we show up on social media, to how we interact with prospects, to how we interact with clients. Yeah, no. There's a couple of things I want I want to unpack there, but um, but yeah, that is great. But isn't it, isn't it interesting? I don't know if there is another profession out there where where people try to not to so almost to 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 say they're not that profession. Like it'd be funny if your if your doctor said, "I don't want to be too medically or doctory about this," you know. But we go like, "I don't want to be too salesy. I don't want." I mean, I, I've, I've done work with uh, with companies in the past who don't even want to call that. They come up with some convoluted term for their salespeople. And I'm yes. always like, yeah, that's, that's fine if you want to do that. I said, but guess what? Prospects and customers, they know their salespeople. You can call them whatever you want. They already know their salespeople. So why not be, uh, to your point, why not be embrace it and be proud of it and say, yes, sales equals problem solving. Yes. Yeah. You're totally right. It's true. Like, the account executive, account manager, mm -hmm. you know, I once was at a company where it was like the director of opportunities and yada, yada, <laughs> yada. I'm like, just a salesperson and, yeah. and not just a salesperson, but you're a salesperson. Like, yeah, call it what you want, but you're here to drive revenue inside of an organization. And I think it's being really proud of that profession. And, and for me, I'm very passionate about changing the stigma around sales. Um, I want it to be a profession that people are proud to be. Like mm. you said, people are proud to say I'm a doctor, right? Some people are yeah. like, oh, I'm in sales. You know, like, no, be proud to say you're in sales. If you're a professional, mm. you're good at what you do. You solve problems. You're the lifeblood of any business. Like, for me, it's it's a very empowering thing. Yeah, and let's face it, the, the, that doctor that you love that you go to, uh, the equipment that they're using, the stuff that they're giving you, it was sold to them by somebody, right? You know, so, uh, <laughs> but it is, it's just, a, that was just an aside. It's just interesting. I do think we need, you know, that we need to get over that piece about sales and stop. I know it's because they're, the representations of sales and popular culture have been, uh, you know, almost entirely negative over the years, but that doesn't mean you have to play into that either. Uh, you know, you could sort of say, yeah, that's fine, but I, here's my version of sales. Mm -hmm. Yep. I totally agree. But, 
Yeah, and here's the other thing you mentioned as well, and I and I think this is really important, is that idea of uh, excitement and enthusiasm, because let's face it, if you're not excited and enthusiastic about the product or service or whatever it is you're 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 um, selling or representing, why would I as a as a as a prospect why would I get excited about it? Right. It, so it's when, like the missing yeah. link for so many people. It's like you just talk enthusiastically about what you do. People are interested. Like you know, we mm -hmm. can sit here and tell you that I solve this problem and I do this thing and yada yada yada. Or we can be like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you about this thing. Like you have to hear about it. It's amazing. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your business. You're saying the same thing. It's just the energy and how you show up. And uh, I think that enthusiasm and, you know, excitement about what we do every single day in anything, sales or otherwise, right, John, that yeah. makes such a difference in how you deal with a job that does come with a lot of rejection and a lot of you know negative connotation i think that enthusiasm and excitement can make all the difference in the world in not only the amount of money you make as a sales professional or business owner but as the you know about the quality of life about having fun yeah so how do you when you advise people i mean how do you help them show up with a better mindset because let's face it i mean that is one of the things that you have control over right you yeah. have total control over how you show up now you don't have control over how the other person shows up or if they even show up to your point about the uh, the rejection but how do you help people to develop a much more you know positive and, and a stronger mindset totally so there's a couple of different ways like one I, this is something i learned uh, when i became an entrepreneur is really understanding where does the negative negativity come from Right, like so many of us don't realize what the highlight reel is in our head around sales. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is understanding, like, what are you afraid of? Right? Are you afraid of rejection? Are you afraid of being judged? Are you afraid people are going to think you're a snake oil salesman? Like, what? What is the fear? Right? Because the first thing is, is before we can embrace it, we have to understand what it is. Right? Like, where is that feeling in your stomach coming from? Um, and for me, it's typically through just you know, taking some time to think about it, having a conversation with someone like, okay, I'm a salesperson. That makes me feel, I don't want people to think that I'm greedy. I don't want people to think that I'm money hungry. I don't want to bother people. Um, I realized that one of my kind of stories around sales, John was, you know, when I, I grew up in the tele, you know, the, the telemarketing age when like telemarketers mm -hmm. used to call your house in the middle of dinner. And I remember like my parents being like, like, that was the worst thing. Like, why are they interrupting our meal? Right. Um, and so to me, like that, it goes that far back, right? Yeah. That sales is a bad thing because my parents didn't like the telemarketer that called her home in the middle of dinner. And so really understanding like where that negativity comes from and then reframing those things, you know, like, Hey, what, what is powerful about what you do? Um, and then it's, it's being very aware of it. I think one of the things like exiting the corporate world and getting into entrepreneurship and now training salespeople is we didn't talk about this in the corporate world. It was never brought up. I don't know if you experienced this in your sales career, but it was never brought up. But now that I know it, like we teach it to salespeople all of the time. Like mindset is something that has to be done every day. Like we have to reset our mind every day. So is it listening to a podcast? Is it finding something that's interesting? Is it pump up music? Is it like whatever, whatever gets you in a good mood, like do that and do it every day. You know, is it Zig Ziglar that says like motivation is like bathing, like it, it doesn't last, we have to do it every day. Like it's that same concept um, with every day we have to reset. What are you excited about today? And I literally do this, John, with my sales team in our like mm -hmm. AM meetings. It's what are you most excited to do today? And right. I literally frame the question that way. Cause nobody's like, I'm excited to reach out to 50 new prospects. <laughs> Nobody's pumped about that, but it's like, Hey, yeah. I'm really excited to get 20 people registered for our upcoming workshop, or I'm really pumped because I have a follow-up call with so-and-so. And I think we're going to be the perfect fit for that person. And so like, I literally ask them that question every day, instead of what are you going to get done today? It's what are you most excited about? Yeah, no, no, it's it's a it's a great point, Ryan, and and again about the, the the choosing how you show up and the fact that you have to do it every day. And yes, you have to do it every day. I think a, a huge part of that is how you set yourself up for the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've I've talked to, about this a lot though. Uh, is you have to be very careful about the inputs that you put into your brain, especially first thing in the morning, especially when you're getting ready for a, a job as tough as sales. Like if you're on if you're on news sites and they're just annoying the heck out of you because that's what they're designed to do, um, and they're provoking you, or you're on social media getting upset about oh look at all these other people seem to be having a great life and I'm not even though that's not reality either. 
But I just think you have to be very conscious about the inputs if you're going to set yourself up for success. Yep. 110 percent you know i i do i start my day every morning with you know gratitude i try to read a book a few pages of a book you know i exercise and then normally while i get ready as long as as long as my children are still asleep i will normally you know pop in my earbuds while i you know do my makeup and stuff in the morning and it's typically a podcast or a book or something that yeah it keeps me away from social media it keeps me out of meh and really focused and gives me good ideas. I get excited. I'm like, oh, we got to implement this, like just some really cool stuff. So I totally agree with you. And I think it's across the board, you know, Mm -hmm. as humans, we let way too much into our our sphere that is, is not bringing any positivity to our lives. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, I mean, you look at sports, uh, you know, sports people, sports teams, they, they all warm up before they start. Uh, but we don't. I mean, most of us jobs, we do, we roll out of bed and roll straight into nowadays. It's literally roll out of bed and roll straight into the job um, without getting yourself properly prepared. And I think that's uh, that's something that, again, we're talking about things completely within your control. That's one. Yep. That's so true. We always say that, you know, um, Kelly Roach is, is my business partner in the academy. And we talk a lot about, you know, we we train for business like athletes train for sport. And it, I've never really talked about the warm up, but it's very true. You know, they warm up, they have a ritual. Um, they're very big in visualization and meditation. Mm-hmm. And I actually, LeBron James had a, like a meditation on the Calm app. I don't know if it's still there, if it was a short time thing where he talked about like how he gets prepped for game time. And one of the things he said, John, is that I'm not training for the next game. I'm training for the next championship. Like I'm not, I'm not training for the game on, on Saturday, right? Like I'm training, I'm training for the finals. I'm training for my next championship all of the time. And I thought that was such an interesting way that like, yeah, it's not about tomorrow or the next day. It's the next day. It's training like a champion all of the time. So I think those are really great. I like that warm up example a lot. Yeah, and and the thing that you mentioned earlier is I think there's a, everybody does need to go and find their triggers, you know, find what it is that yeah. triggers a negative emotion or puts you feeling defensive or whatever. Because as you said, it can go back to it can go back to something from your childhood. It can go back to something early in your career. It can come from anywhere. But when you identify it, then you can go, okay, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to push that aside. But if you don't identify it, it can just hit you. And you've seen it. It's happened to all of us. I mean where everything has been going swimmingly and then suddenly somebody says something or look or whatever that triggers something you don't even recognize it at the time and suddenly you're in a downward spiral so recognizing those are really important Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and then realizing like how bogus the story is to begin with like i said with the telemarketer in the middle of dinner i'm like that's ridiculous you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's smart on them. I remember when that used to happen. You used to be going, ah, I bet you it's a phone solicitor. But yes, but we were there. Yeah, we were <laughs> uh, there and we answered the phone because it wasn't like yeah. nowadays where it's like, oh, we can just leave a message. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah, or you had the door-to-door, uh, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica, Britannica salesperson. Right. You have to hide <laughs> under the couch uh, in case they looked in the window. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but there you go. I mean, there again, um, you know, somebody like trying to bring a valuable product and we were just, you know, hiding under the couch. So that's unfortunately <laughs> what you're up against sometimes in this, in the, in this business. So what are, what are some other things that you, uh, that you advise people to do? So like get your rich or get yourself in the right mindset, get enthusiastic. And then how do you help people sustain that? Because I mean, sometimes we can start out like that, right. You know, and then a couple of calls or, or whatever into it, that's all gone. Sure. So the biggest thing that I coach to, John, is expecting the no, right? Like you said, a couple calls into it, all the motivation's gone, but why? Like, we know the numbers, we know what the metrics tell us, and we know that on every given day, we're going to get more no's than yeses. So rather than thinking, well, something has gone wrong, I'm doing it wrong, nobody has any money, these prospects suck, like all the things that we like to say to ourselves when things don't go our way, right? It's just thinking like, no, this is just part of the process. So it's it's being prepared for the less than favorable outcomes. So instead of being surprised and being disappointed by them, it's part of the deal, right? Like when you know your metrics and you know your numbers and you know your system and you know, you know, what what each day looks like, we're not surprised by the no. We're not surprised by the lack of response. We're not surprised by the I went with your competitor because we just expect it because it's part of it's part of the deal. And so then it, it doesn't tend to derail us as much 
or the we can recover faster, right? Like we're always, we're human, right? You're mm -hmm. going to be disappointed by now. Nobody wants to be rejected. But when we are expecting the rejection or the no, you know, then it, it doesn't keep us down for as long. So with, with the, both the sellers that we train inside of the academy and with my team, it's like, okay, you know, just not a no. So perfect example, we got um, a DM response from someone over on Instagram that we were inviting to a workshop. And she basically was like, well, if this is the way that you guys do business, you know, I'm just not interested. And my sales rep sent it to me and she was like, what are your thoughts on this? And I was like, well, how's it, how do you feel? And her answer was, well, yeah, she's just not our people. I'm like, exactly. Right. Nothing has gone wrong because she sent you my nasty gram on Instagram. Okay. She's not our people. Like, that's okay. And so, you know, my rep could have just let that tank her entire day. And, and she didn't, you know, she was like, okay, those are not our people. People that think that building relationships in the DMs are, is bad, then they're just not our people. They're never going to buy our stuff. They're never going to watch, listen to our podcast. They're just not our people. And so, like I said, just having some of those safeguards in place for like, oh yeah, those aren't our people or, oh yeah, I expected it. Or, oh yeah, you know, it always takes me this many no's to get to a yes. It allows you to bounce back faster. Yeah, no, I know a hundred percent. I mean, I think sometimes it's like, uh, you know, like stepping into a boxing ring and then being surprised when the other person actually punches you in the face a couple of times, you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> You're full of good analogies, John. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I, but I love what you're saying there about, the, and I think that's a, a trap a lot of people fall into, and 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 it's it's a very natural trap because you know, especially if you're, if if maybe you're not having the greatest year or whatever, chasing after everything. There's probably a great temptation in the example that you use there, a great temptation to go back and say, oh, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you were offended by this, but we're a really cool company and we'd be great to work. And falling over yourself to your point is of somebody who's never going to be your customer. Uh, so I think that's a great point about making sure that you are focusing on the right people, because if you focus on the wrong people, well, the chances of them rejecting you are just skyrocketed. In fact, it's yeah. going to be it'll be a, it'll be kind of strange if they don't. Totally. Yeah. yeah. We talk a lot about that, too, is is knowing your ideal client inside and out, because, again, in, in a job that is already so set up for no and rejection and failure essentially yeah we have to give ourselves the very best at that and yeah if, if your outreach is not to the right people then you just you know magnify what's already naturally going to happen due to the nature of what we do no no I, I'm absolutely and then you know how do you how do you advise people because if, if once you get the the contact with the person you have to deliver something you have to deliver something of value you have to wow them you have to make them feel like yeah this is somebody worth my worth my interacting with so how do you help people during that phase yeah uh, there are two things that I tell all the reps that we train our our job is always to be the most interesting and the most interested person in anybody's inbox by mm. interesting and interested. So how do we get somebody's attention, John? We make it about them in a meaningful way. So what do I mean by that? There, I literally got an email today that was like, hey, I you know, read your post on LinkedIn and I thought it was really insightful and I'd love to have a conversation with you about this, this, and this. What that person missed and what I know they did was they copied and pasted and sent that message to 400 people because it said, I saw your post on LinkedIn, but it didn't say anything about the actual post. Like, what did I say? What was interesting about it? What did you like about it? Why did you, you know, why, why did that make you feel like you should reach out to me about what you do? And so for me, how do we get into that phase? How do we get people's attention? How do we stand out? We actually take the extra 90 seconds to send a message or to do some outreach in a really personalized way. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of, you know, people that are like, oh, well, we can't get in as many outbound messages that way, but no, but people are actually going to read them because they're about them, right? So for me, it's always make it about them, personalize, not like, oh, you could have sent this to 27 people and it just sounded like you personalized it, one. And then to always be very direct in why you're reaching out. And I think that this goes back to the sales mindset, right? Where we don't actually want to tell people that this is a sales, you know, I don't want to reach them out. I want them to think I'm trying to sell them something. And I'm like, they know you're trying to sell them something. The longer you avoid telling them what yeah. you're trying to sell them, the less likely you are to actually get any interest. 
So be interesting, be interested, and then tell them why you're there. Like the reason I reached out to you is because of this. I think you would find this valuable. I think you would find this helpful based on what I could find out out about, about you online. I really thought that you might find this interesting, or I really wanted to connect with you about this thing. Um, because I think it's, again, our sales avoidance. You know what I'm talking about? I don't, don't, don't think I'm trying to sell something to them. I'm like, they know you're not there to like have a conversation yeah. and like make friends. It's not what we're doing here. Yeah, and I mean, I like that example that you just used there because, you know, the person reaching out and saying like, oh, you know, your blog post is really interesting. And then you look down and you think, hmm, but they didn't comment on it. They didn't like it. Uh, so, I mean, so the, this stuff is very transparent now and, it, you know, it's very, it's very easy to see through and people have their antenna up. So to your point is you're not doing yourselves any, and you're not doing yourself any favor when you're, shall we say, faux personalizing things. Right. Well, personalizing things and, and trying to pretend you're reaching out for any other reason than the reason you're reaching out is to build a relationship and see if you can solve a problem. And I don't think the two things are mutually exclusive, right? Like mm-hmm. you can build a relationship and solve a problem at the same time or build a relationship and find out that that person doesn't actually have a problem. But again, maybe they become a collaboration partner. Maybe they become a referral partner. Maybe they become a podcast interview, right? There's a million different arenas that we can take relationships these days, which I think is yeah. so cool with social media that we need to start, stop hiding our our motives and just be straight with people i think we'll get way farther and i think people yeah yeah and and to your point i think then also always going in with yeah would you like to sell something absolutely but if you can't sell something here well what's the next or if you can't even get if you can't even sort of advance a sales process you know what's the next best thing that can come out of this so always have a couple of fallbacks to, to your point is you know maybe it's some maybe it's somebody just going to build a relationship and they can refer you maybe it's somebody as you said who could be a collaboration partner um maybe it's somebody who just helped you again um reinforce your the correct customer target customer because maybe they reminded you that they're not the right person so there's a lot of things that could come out of if you, if you look for different if you look for you know backup outcomes totally yeah, but unfortunately, most people go in with one outcome in mind and then get disappointed when they don't get that one. Right, right. Yeah. So what's yeah. the what's the one that what's the last piece of advice you would offer salespeople, particularly in the world where we're operating in today, kind of coming out of the pandemic and all of that? How can you have the strongest mindset? And what are what are prospects and, and customers? What are we looking for from salespeople today? Totally. So how do we have the strongest mindset? It's what we talked about before. It's it's limiting what goes into your ears. It's controlling the narrative, right? It's listening to things that are helpful or uplifting. And again, if you're not like into podcasts or books, like find music mm-hmm. that lifts you up, right? Yeah. Like in my house in the morning during breakfast with my kids, like we listen to worship music. Like that's what, you know, but at least it's not the news, right? Yeah. So it's like what you feed to your brain. And then what do prospects and consumers, like I think they want genuine connection. They want genuine, like, again, don't, don't BS me. Don't pretend like you're here to do anything, what you're trying to do. Talk to me like a human. Like the biggest piece of Mm -hmm. advice I tell people, especially like in social selling and leveraging social media is talk to a person like you would in person. And John, if we were at a networking event, I would never walk up to you and be like, Hey, John, my name is Ryan and I'm amazing. And I do all these incredible things. (laughs) And here's the link to my calendar. And I'd really love to connect with you. Right. I'd be like, Hey, John, I see that your name's John and you're with sales pop. What's sales pop. That's really cool. How did you get into that? That's awesome. I love that. Ooh, CRMs. I love CR, you know, like that's how the conversation would go. So stop trying to pretend like it's anything other than relationship building. What happens online is no different than what's in person and really focus on, on those things. So that's always the lens I, I tell my reps and the people we train is if you would not say it to someone in person, if it would not be an appropriate greeting in person, it's not an appropriate greeting on the internet. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I always love that. I would take those networking events as a great example of like, you know, really ask yourself, would I do this? As you said, I mean, it's like with your saying with the um, with the faux personalization or the, the the mass emails, that's just like walking into the room and shouting at everybody. I mean, the place, you know, you'd soon have a, a big gap around you, but that's I, literally what you're doing. Totally. That's a great, <laughs> yeah, on point with the analogies. I'm liking it. <laughs> Yes, this is my analogy afternoon. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah. So anyway, getting back to the getting back to the point. Um, but yeah, I do think it, that you should always use that lens of of how would you act in person? How would you act if this was a networking event? And if you're acting very differently online, then there's there's a disconnect because at the end of the day, yeah, it may be it may be social, it may be online selling, but you're still selling to people. And as I always say, if you can't sell offline, you can't really sell online. To be honest. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, this is great, uh, Ryan. All, all of Ryan's information is going to be below the video so you can find out more. But before we go, please tell people a bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, run a company called Social Sellers Academy, and we offer a, um, a sales training program specifically for people leveraging social media as a sales tool. Uh, so we teach, you know, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Clubhouse, TikTok these days, how to really leverage that as a sales tool. So really taking the old school sales tactics into a more connection based, um, connection based format on social media. So we work with, um, you know, all kinds of service based businesses that are, are looking to leverage the tool. And uh, the best place to hang out with us is on Instagram at Social Sellers Academy. Um, tons of tips, tricks, ideas, trainings, um, things like that for connecting with new people. Yeah, it's fantastic, Ryan. I love it. Yeah, yeah, ab ab absolutely. And uh, yeah, and it's interesting. And who, if we talk again in six months or a year, who knows what other platforms you'll be on even. platforms we haven't right. even heard about it yet, right? There's new ones <laughs> coming every day. Exactly. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Ryan. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.